Well, hi. This is Pastor Owen, and I have the pleasure of being the pastor at Be uh, Beaver Dam and Rousey's Chapel, United Methodist Church. And you are joining us for our Ash Wednesday service right here on Facebook. A couple of things that you'll need to gather before we, we start our worship time together, and that is uh, a candle so that we can have a physical reminder that Christ is present with us, and also something to use as ashes. Uh, if you're fortunate and have the palm leaves left over from last year, you're invited to, to stop this video and burn them, create ashes, and then mix them with, with some oil. Caution, do not mix them with water. If you mix ashes with water, uh, they will actually burn your skin because they actually produce lye. Uh, if you don't have the palm ashes and you have some other ashes uh, left from a fireplace, you're more than welcome to use those. Uh, if you don't have either one of those, I invite you to go get some soil of the earth. Because remember, in text we read that from dust we are made and to dust we shall return. So dust is the soil of the earth. And then you can feel free to mix that with either water and make a, make a little mud, a mud type compact, or with oil, either one. And if you don't have either one of those, uh, just regular oil will work. Um, I prefer olive oil because it reminds us of the area that, that the, the disciples and Jesus would have lived in. But I invite you to go ahead and pull those items together now. We're gonna light our candle. Feel free to pause the video and then start it when you're ready. So let's get our hearts and minds ready for worship. So let us pray. Oh God, create in us clean hearts and renew your spirit within us. Please don't take your spirit away from us. Restore unto us the joy of your salvation. Be willing, O God, to keep us in your tender care. Deliver us, Lord, and free us from ourselves, our flesh. Help us, Father, to use our lives as a testament to your transformational power. Allow your Holy Spirit to re redirect us when we begin to wallow back to the former. We want to be used in your service. We come to you today in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, our scripture lesson today, our first one comes from Psalm, and it's Psalm 51, verses 1 through 7. And I'm reading from the Common English Bible today. So listen to these inspired words from the psalmist. Have mercy on me, God, according to your faithful love. Wipe away my wrongdoings according to your great compassion. Wash me completely clean of my guilt. Purify me from my sin, because I know my wrongdoings. My sin is always right in front of me. I've sinned against you and you alone. I've committed evil in your sight. That's why you are justified when you render your verdict, completely correct when you issue your judgment. Yes, I was born in guilt and sin from the moment my mother conceived me. And yes, you want truth in the midst of hidden places. You teach me wisdom in the most sacred space. Purify me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear the joy and celebration again. Let the bones you crush rejoice once more. Hide your face from my sins. Wipe away all my guilty deeds. Create a clean heart for me, God. Put a new faithful spirit deep inside me. Please don't throw me out of your presence. Please don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. Return the joy of your salvation to me and sustain me with a willing spirit. 
Then I will teach wrongdoers your ways, and sinners will come back to you. Deliver me from violence, God, God of my salvation, so that my tongue can sing of your righteousness. Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will proclaim your praise. You don't want sacrifices. If I give an entirely burnt offering, you wouldn't be pleased. A broken spirit is my sacrifice, God. You won't despise a heart, God, that is broken and crushed. And our gospel lesson today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 6, and then 16 through 21. Listen to these words from the gospel writer. Be careful that you don't practice your religion in front of people to draw their attention. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Whenever you give to the poor, don't blow your trumpet as hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that you may get praise from people. I assure you that you will only get rewarded they'll get. But when you do give to the poor, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that you may give to the poor in secret. Your Father, who sees what you do in secret, will reward you. When you pray, don't pray like the hypocrite. <coughs> They love to pray standing in the synagogue and on the street corners so that people will see them. I assure you, that's the only reward they'll get. But when you pray, go to your room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is present in that secret place. Your Father who sees what you do in secret will reward you. And when you fast, don't put on a sad face like the hypocrites. They distort their faces so people will know that they are fasting. I assure you that they have their reward. When you fast, brush your hair, wash your face. Then you won't look like you're fasting to people, but only to your father who is present in that secret place. Your father who sees in secret will reward you. Stop collecting treasures for your own benefit on earth, where moth and rust eat them, where thieves break in and steal them. Instead, collect treasures for yourselves in heaven, where moth and rust don't eat them, and where thieves don't break, break in and steal them. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You know, today is Wednesday, and it's not just any Wednesday, because today is the first day of Lent. And, you know, there's something about a church season that starts in the middle of the week. To me, it speaks of the importance of the season and how Lent is important because it's a journey that we take each year that leads us to the cross and to the resurrection of Jesus. But this year feels a little different. I don't know about you, but there have been times when I don't feel like the Lent from last year ever ended. I mean, a year ago, we were gathered for worship at church and we started our Lenten journey together not knowing what just laid right around ahead, right around the corner. And now it's almost a year later. And in a lot of ways, I feel that we are still in the midst of ashes and sackcloth. We're still missing the joy of the resurrection because so much has changed. Like going out to movies, and gathering with family and friends without worrying it, worrying about it becoming a super spreader event. All of those things are with us. These feelings bring me to the thought that maybe there's more to Lent 
and solemnness and suffering that maybe Lent is supposed to mean something more, more than our normal giving up something like chocolate or ice cream like we've practiced in the past, that maybe Lent is really meant to be a time of reflection, a time for us to reflect on what it means to give up, to give up worldly treasures and to truly follow Jesus. What it means for, for us to clean out all of that useless stuff in our lives and really, I mean really, prepare ourselves to receive the love of Christ. And friends, I do believe it means more. And if you weren't joining me here, I, I, would, I would feel kind of lonely. But you know, you are taking the first step in that preparation here with me. And I find the text from the Gospel of Matthew interesting. You know, today it reads sort of like cautionary guidelines of what God expects from us when it comes to practicing what we know as our spiritual disciplines. Those disciplines of prayer and fasting and giving to the poor and doing good works. Jesus was telling those who were listening how they should avoid all the showy, hey, look at me, look at what I am doing type behaviors and really focus on what I would like to call flying under the radar and being faithful in what you're doing and why you do it. For you see, God really isn't interested in the showing off to the world all the things that we're doing. No, God is interested in what's inside our hearts. He is he's interested in the intent in which we are doing what we do. So to me, this means focusing on living a life that is somewhat simple, unpretentious, and focused on God. Maybe this is what Lent is for, to help us to repent and to regain that focus in Christ, to regain that new birth that comes with spring each year as the flowers bloom, that new birth that comes at resurrection with Easter. This is what Lent is for, a time of reflection and new growth. So as we begin Lent this year, I ask you, what spiritual disciplines keep you focused on Christ? That answer to that question is going to be different for each one of us. For some, it's going to be participating in worship on Facebook each week, or maybe coming back to in-person worship soon. Or it might mean joining the new Lenten study that we're starting next week. And for some, it might mean picking up the Bible and reading scripture each day or increasing the time spent in prayer or trying different types of prayer. And for others, it may be fasting from their favorite food or fasting from some other worldly pleasure like too much screen time on their devices. And for some, it might mean finding new ways to serve, new ways to give, new ways to show God's love to our community. The answer to that question is what keeps us focused on Christ? It's going to be different from each one of us. But the important thing is, is that we're purposeful. And that leads us to my prayer for you for during this time of Lent. My prayer for each of you during this season of Lent is that you find, maybe for the first time, or maybe find it again, your passion for following Jesus Christ. 
that by staying focused on the what and why of what you do, that you find yourself growing closer and closer to God. Amen. You know, friends, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. And it became a custom in the church that before Easter celebration, there should be 40 days, a season of spiritual preparation. During this season, uh, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. And it was a time when people who had also committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled and, and by penance and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation is reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the Gospels of Jesus Christ and the need that we all have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church universal to observe a holy Lent. And by observing a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, to make a right beginning of repentance. And as a mark of our moral nature, let us now bow our heads and come before our Creator and Redeemer. Almighty God, you have created, uh, created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be a sign of our moral mortality and penance, so that we may remember that by your gracious gift, we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. So friends, I invite you now to, uh, to place the ashes or oil or the dust that you have on your forehead in the sign of a cross. Uh, and if you happen to be worshiping with somebody else, feel free to uh, um, uh, put the ashes on each other, just as a way, as, as our reminder. So uh, as you do this, get your ashes, and remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have rebelled against you your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Oh God, forgive us, we pray, and free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, friends, may the season of Lent be one of reflection and growth. Go with the blessings of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.